folks and welcome to the Snowies Camping Show. You are here today with Ben and Lauren, just us, no guests today. But sorry. we, sorry, <laughs> uh, but actually before we get into the episode, don't forget, um, as I always say, to subscribe wherever you're listening to your podcast be that YouTube or through a podcast app. Uh, and also jump on to our Facebook group, Snowy's Camping Show, where you can join in on any conversations that are happening there, give us some feedback about the show, things like that. So a little while ago we did an episode, episode 54, where we were talking tent pegs. 54 episodes. Wow. So that we, we started that episode out thinking, oh, no, tent pegs. We've got to let's try and make at least – 20 to 30 about minutes about, uh, and it was quite easy in the end, right? Yeah, and people actually loved it, yeah. which I was surprised by. I thought people would be like, oh, tempegs. Boring. But no, they loved it. But we only covered off on and some heavy tempegs. from the responses for that episode were, oh, what about hiking pegs? Because mm. we just basically covered car camping. So today we're doing an episode dedicated to hiking pegs specifically. So – Obviously, I think depending on what hiker you speak to, there might be different opinions on, mm. on different sorts of pegs and some pegs might work really well for other people um, and not so great for others um, and people have different sorts of experience. But basically we're just going to run through um, hiking pegs. Yeah, there's a bit more just comes into materials here. Cause materials, with, um, yeah, for sure. General camping, we just talked really about steel pegs mostly because you're using a big mallet to build them in the ground. But yeah. with hiking pegs, weight becomes more of a consideration. Yeah. Um, so with weight, things become smaller, shorter, so then there's different and shapes. Lighter. To try, and, and lighter. And yeah. lighter, yeah. Um, and then th- there comes different shapes into how the peg's made to and try and have better holding power and, and yeah. all those sort of things. So um, probably – it's it depends on the sort of tent you've got too. Like if you've just got a, a lightweight two to three season tent, then you're not going to probably need the same set of pegs that you would if you've got like an expedition sort of four season style tent because you've got that pitched in heavier wind. So yeah, um, I think uh, probably to, probably too early a summary, but a lot of people will have a handful of different styles of pegs. If mm. you've got a three season tent, um, have different styles of pegs that they'll take based on whether they're going in and the location they're going to because it's going to be very dependent on the ground that you're setting it up on. Yeah. And, of course, um, you know, talking about the kind of tent that you have, if you have um, even if it's just a, a, you know, a two to three season um, tunnel tent versus more of the tents that have more of that dome style construction, they're going to require better pegs because they're not freestanding. So if you have a freestanding tent, the pegs that you use will be, you know, just a bit of an extra guy rope, help your tent set up, you know, tensions, all that sort of jazz. But if it's not a freestanding tent, you're really relying on those pegs. That's um, right. Regardless of whether or not, you know, it's expedition, um, expedition grade tent or not. Um, yeah, so the the tunnel style tents are really good in the wind. Yeah. Um, if you pitch them the right way. But, yeah, you do need – you're going to need more better – Pegs, more better pegs. More, more better pegs to hold that in place. But, yeah, yeah your dome style one. Probably for the dome style um, tent that I've got, I've had it for a long time, uh, mm. it's got two vestibules. So I really just need two really good pegs yeah. to go on the outside of the vestibules. Vestibule. I get picked up for saying vestibule. Um, vestibule. And then uh, lighter weight pegs for the four corners, so six yeah. pegs all together. Um, and probably maybe – Four more heavier ones if it's really windy for the guy ropes. Because so. most, most, um, well, in my experience anyway, most hiking tents, the fly actually connects directly to the the peg point itself or the tab on the corner, either by a little clip or an attachment. It doesn't. You don't yeah. need a peg for your tent and a peg for your fly. Does that make sense? You mean on the corners or on the, the guy cor- rope? No, on the corners. Oh, yeah, on the corners. Yeah. So, like, if you even at a pinch, if you know you're going, it's going to be you know, probably fairly fair weather um, or you're doing a lot of platform camping or, or things like that, or hiking I should say, if you've got a two-person tent and there's two of you, you're going to have two full bodies plus your gear in that tent that's filling out that whole floor yep. space. It's not a massive deal if you're not pegging your corners down. No, that's right. If your weight's yeah. in there all the time, and that's the other thing with, with hiking tents is you often you're setting it up, you're in there, you're sleeping, you get out and you pack it down. So yeah. your weight is holding that down and the pegs you need more for the stability of the tent for the um, to keep it taut to get mm-hmm. you know rain from um, a water yeah. from pooling, but also in the wind. So yeah, yeah, so a lot of considerations, but you're probably going to need a handful of various uh, pegs depending mm-hmm. on where you're going. Um, 
bring up the topic again that we spoke about last time, which is the tents that come, the pegs that come with your, with tent, your tent. Are they mixed, mixed around? I found that for the most part, if you're buying a reasonable quality hiking tent, they say, come get what with you get relevant, what you pay for. Yeah, you you get good pegs with hmm. it. Um, that's one style of peg. You might want to find you you want to get different style if you're particularly soft ground or hard ground or mm. or snow. Snow is a different peg again. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a lot of good value, um, more affordable hiking tents out there, mm. sort of around that sort of 150 maybe $200 mark, um, but they come with not so o- great pegs. okay pegs, yeah. but not, not as good. And quite often if you're uh, – and when we say they're, they're okay, there's lightweight, they're quite often still made of alloy or aluminium. Yeah, I would say in my experience with those sorts of pegs, especially with sort of working with customer sport and some warranty areas, is that they're still going to be lightweight but they're not as strong. They tend to actually bend or snap That's right. more readily. It's not so much that they're heavier pegs per se. Yeah, that's right. And so I think all the pegs we talk about here today are not designed because they're made with, uh, we'll go into materials a bit later, but they're mm. made with um, aluminium or titanium or one of those lighter like weight materials. type ones. <clears throat> that's right. And if you start using a, you know, one and a half kilo mash hammer on one of those, you're going to destroy it really quickly. They're mm. really designed to be pushed into the grounds with your hands. Mm-hmm. Um Probably not so much your foot because you can get funny angles on it with your foot, but even yeah. a small rock and you, and you're just tapping it in to, gently to, to be yeah. gentle. So they're not. It's it's a their their primary goals are to keep your tent secure and be lightweight, not yeah. tent secure and be easier to put in the ground. Yeah, it's it's a different focus. Just on that, if you're tapping it in with a rock, I've often just found a piece of bark or something that I've folded over a couple of times oh, yeah. and you can put it as a buffer between your peg and your rock so you're not like damaging the, peg, the, yeah. the head of your peg. Because it'll bend over, it'll sort of flatten out. Yeah, yeah. or like just pit. You know, yeah. if you've got a rock that's, um, a, you know, like a coarse rock or something, if it like pits the edge or gets some of that. Yep. I don't know, you know when they alloy pegs or aluminium pegs and they're colourful, mm-hmm. I'm going to ask a really dumb question here now. It just occurred to me and I've thought about it before. <laughs> is it, uh, is that a, Coloured coating, or is the actual aluminium dyed that colour? It's an, usually an anodized coating. An anodized coating. I'm, I'm saying that I, I don't have any rational explanation behind that. I don't know of any coloured alloy. As yeah. far as I know, they're all silver. Because, like, if you're hitting it with a rock and that colour comes off, and you you accident, you know, you're taking the, the top of your t- that anodized coating or whatever it is off the top of your tent peg. Yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure if you scrape through all of that colour, it would go through to silver, silver. underneath. I don't. Yeah. Think I don't know why any. I never thought of that question before, but anyway. No, I I've not thought of it before, but I'm sure it's a coating. Yeah, anodized. Maybe it's painted, but probably the good quality ones would be an anodized, anodized coating. So. Yeah, and that helps with corrosion as well. It protects the you got the anodized coating on the outside, yeah. and then it protects the alloy or, or whatever is underneath that. Yeah. Now, different style. Um, there's obviously a hook, hook top style, which is the, the kind of we talked about in the last episode, like the number mm. seven type thing. And when we the talk, hiking, yeah, sorry, go on. So I'll when we talked off. about hitting those in before with a hammer, they bend really easily. Yeah. And we talked about the super peg ones having a kind of shaped head that yeah. allowed the, the force of the hammer to kind of go more directly down the center of the peg. Some of them are like that, but those are, are far more prone to bending because of yeah. the softer metal. And if you start hitting it, you'll find that that little – Hook on the top, bends over much easier. And I think some of the hiking style ones are much more pronounced as well. They're more like a big shepherd's staff type thing. Like they've yeah. got a real big crook on the top and they've got this yeah. huge circle. Yeah. And um, They're yeah. lightweight and functional, probably good for soft ground, but if you start using them in hard ground, you're going to bend them up pretty quick. Yeah. And as soon as the top starts to bend and the shaft starts to bend. And, yeah. Um, and we'll get on a bit more about the materials later. I've made some notes, but there's some downsides to when it starts to bend, it, it kind of mm. gets worse. But probably a, a better um, option for the lightweight ones is, is or uh, aluminium, we'll stick with aluminium for now, mm. uh, are the straight ones, like a pin, like a straight pin. Yeah, um, they're like needles or pins they're often called. Yeah, so yeah. when you're hitting it, the force is just going straight down the shaft mm-hmm. of the peg. You haven't got any bends or anything. Some of them have little cutouts to sort of allow their guy rope to, to stay in place when mm-hmm. you've got it hooked over there. Um, if those cutouts weren't there, the pegs would be even stronger because yeah. that creates a weakness point, but without it, the guy ropes don't stay on, so it's kind of a catch Some 22. of them are um- – cylindrical or round mm-hmm. and some of them are squared and I reckon the square ones are, would be a lot stronger. Do you reckon? Uh, probably. Um, depends on the material, I suppose. Because like, we'll, we'll, if, you've, if, you've if you've just got a, a cylindrical pin mm-hmm. versus a square 
tube or not tube but solid thing, the s- cylindrical one's going to bend way easier than the squared. Yeah, there must be some mechanics behind which one's which I, there. Yeah, I've seen some of them that have like the cylindrical ones that have like a little head on them, almost like a nail head. Mm. And then the ones that I've seen that are squared, uh, like I know MSR um, does needle stakes, Zempai do like an aluminium um, peg as well. They look like a crochet hook with that tiny little uh, yeah, notch that's at the right. top. Little yeah, notch and out. They're, but they're square. But then right. I've also seen other sort of um, like carbon stakes and whatever that are cylindrical mm. and just a little bit thicker. Yeah, okay. There's, I think there's a lot in sort of with the weight and material and how, mm. how thick it is, like a carbon, you can get carbon fibre pegs as well. Yeah. Um, they're straight. You can't make a curved carbon no, fibre peg. Yeah. And quite often they'll have a plastic cap on it. So they're yeah. really designed to not be belted into the ground because if you're hitting that, Just you're going to break in. it. But they're really lightweight. They'd be super quick and easy to push in on real soft ground mm. yep. where you know it's you're not going to have any issues whatsoever. Yeah, that's right. And they're right. going so quick. It'd just be like, shoo. Yeah. Now, it's a, there's a, quite a few different sort of variants on um, the needle ones. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, you've gone into shape. We, we, sorry, we've gone into shapes in the next bit. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll jump oh, across. In the st- because, are you talking about the stakes? Yeah, the yeah. stakes are the straight ones. So quite often all of these, um, we've, we've noted V, Y or X shape and there's also that's kind like of squiggly shapes of and, and yeah. that sort of thing. And usually they we see them on straight pegs usually. but the idea behind turning a straight peg, and my preference for a hiking peg is, mm. is a straight one, not the, not the hook type ones mm-hmm. that we, we talked about before. Um, yeah, so like the, the VX or Y ones, you're talking about the, like they're, they're like a little mini um, star dropper, like a little yeah, mini stake. Right. Yeah, yeah, the that's little right. tent stakes. Yep. 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 Usually they're I like a them Y too. shape, and the idea there is it creates more surface area, so it's got yep. better holding power in mm-hmm. the ground. Um, they're nice and lightweight when they're made of alloy or, or whatever they're made of. They're nice and lightweight. A lot stronger because of the shape as well. They're pretty strong, yeah. Mm. Usually I find where they fail is that little notch that comes out. If you hit it hard enough, that's the first thing it starts to yeah, go right, and that, okay. that will start to bend over. <clears throat> but I like those, the straighter pegs. That's yeah. my preference. I have got some hook top ones, but slowly they're just bending, bending and, yeah. and I'm replacing them with The with, other one about the stakes is they don't spin. In the ground, like when you hammer them in, if it's super windy, they're going to hold their position. It's not like they're going to turn in the ground. Whereas the needle ones, yep, they they are they could rotate in their little hole. Whereas your Y shape or your X shape, once they're in, the chances of them spinning around or your guy rope, you know, yeah. coming off them in the wind is a lot less. So you mean if it was a round pin that 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 little yeah, hole like could if spin you're around. if you're using yeah. needles mm-hmm. or pins versus the stake type, yep. The stake type, you know, have those little flanges, whether that be the Y shape or the X shape. Yep. So when they push into the ground, yeah. the actual stake itself can't physically rotate yeah, if okay. it's windy. And, you, you know, if it's a windy night and you've got pins, yep. do you, does that make sense? Yeah, I guess it's only that, – that's probably relevant if the the keeper, let's we'll call it a keeper, the, yeah. the notch just stops the, the guy coming off, yep. if that is kind of dependent on direction if it's required to be on the back yeah, of the peg that's true. then it's going to hold the guy upon but um i think i'm thinking of the, like around, those crochet hook top type ones yeah so yeah. If it's got that notch out but if it's a square one with that crochet hook it's not mm. going to spin and a lot of pins will have sort of an enlarged head on it anyway so yeah. if it spins it doesn't matter but you're right if it was a round one with a notch out of it which i don't i can't recall actually having seen a round one with a notch i could be wrong part um, of me feels like the msr Needle stakes. Yeah, they do quite a lot. The MSR. Maybe they're not round. Maybe they're actually square. Um, yes, MSI do some square ones here. Yeah, they're all red, okay. those ones. I don't yeah. think they do a straight round one that I'm, okay. I'm aware of. Um, but they, so the MS, on MSI, they do one called, uh, I think it's called the Groundhog, which mm. has kind of got this swirly kind of pattern in it. They're not the Groundhogs. The Groundhogs are X and each of the X has a tiny little kink in it, but the swirly ones are different altogether. Are they? Yeah. Promise. I'll okay. look them up real quick. You okay. keep talking. All right. Um, so the idea with, with those extra sort of bends and swirls and stuff in yeah. it is that it's got better holding power in the ground. So you hammer it in and there's kind of more surface area. You can't get it out. So we talk about we talked about this in the uh, last episode too in taking a, a peg out. If they're round, usually it just requires a couple of twists and the peg will come out. But if the peg's got sort of ridges and edges and swirly bits on it, are you thinking yeah, crinkle, they're called, crinkly? No, nah, they're called – are you thinking about the cyclone ones? 
that look yes, like a ones. drill piece. Oh, yes, those ones. Yeah, yeah they're the cyclone. Yep. So they, yeah, they're kind of they're going to probably twist as they go in. So to me, it looks a little bit over engineered. I don't know of a specific use case that I would really need that. Um, yeah, it's going to have it's going to be harder to pull straight out of the ground basically because it's it's got those twisted ridges in it. I guess when you're talking about those tense stakes as well, that is one of the downsides is. Um, when you're, well, in my experience anyway, sometimes pushing them in can really hurt your hands. So you've mm-hmm. got to sort of use your feet or have something there to stop them. And then trying to pull them out can be a bit harder because they do have more surface area. And depending yep. on that kind of ground, admittedly, I've had to leave one or two behind on it. Yeah, on they occasion. are hard to get out and you can't really yank them and wriggle them quite like you can a steel peg because you'll end up damaging it. But quite often nowadays they will come with a little pull loop on it or something so you can get it out the ground a mm. little bit easier. Um, Just quickly, because we were talking about the MSR cyclone um, stakes, apparently they are for much softer ground and they're designed for um, if you're doing tarp hiking or you're putting up a like a, a tarp winged annex to your tent or something. So they're designed to do a bit more of a heavier load and they're about 10 inches long. So they're longer and right. they've got that screw shape. So you probably would choose them 10 inches. Yeah, it says oh, cyclone so 10. Long. Okay. 10 inch, yeah. So All they're right. still designed for hiking because they're obviously MSR, they're ultra, ultra lightweight. But if hy- hypothetically if you're, um, you know, you've got an expedition or you're going with a large group and you want to have a, cent- you know, a central tarp set up, potentially you'd be using those. So maybe they're a, a good alternative to a heavy steel peg if yeah. you've got a bigger, um, a bigger shelter because 10 heavy. inches is long. Yeah, it's like, most, what's that, like 25 or something? Most are probably 15-odd centimetres, 15 yeah. to 20, probably 20 centimetres, I'd say. Mm. Probably even shorter than that. But so my preference, so, and, I, and I did mention groundhog before, they're, they're the Y-shaped ones, the groundhog yep. ones. Uh, Cedar Summit do one called a um, – Ground control. Ground control. Yeah, they're blue. Yep. Um, that's my preference. I, that's what I've used. I like that shape of peg mm-hmm. with, with the Y-shape mm. and little pull string on top. So I've always used that style of peg. With another one we've got listed here, which is by a company called Hampton, which mm. is a, a V peg. Now, this is a bit like your um, angle iron pegs. They're that you, aluminium, you love. yeah, but they're like a mini aluminium version. That's right. And mm. and it doesn't have any welded hook on it. It's kind of, it gets to the top and, and it's been uh, forged or bent or whatever, but it's got a, a, a bend on the top. Now, I have mm. found if you hit that hard enough, because it's got a bend, if you hit it, you're going to keep bending it. Mm. But I've, I've got about. And when you say bending, are you meaning like. Just if you're opening a can of sardines or something, how it sort of curls back on itself. Is that yeah, sort of what you're talking like that. about? Yeah, you're not so much bending the length. They're, I found them to be quite good. Um, like strong r- through, the, the through the of shaft of it, yeah. yeah. But if you hit the top, yeah, you're kind of bending that top over a little bit more. And I guess mm. at some point, because it's aluminium, you keep doing that, something's yeah. going to break. So, But I've actually found them to be quite good. And usually I'll um, hike, well, I've got half a dozen of those. Mm-hmm. And the just the Y shape, like the ground control yep. or the groundhog type pegs. I found those to be useful in most ground. You can't get them into the hardest ground, obviously, mm. but hard to soft ground. And if it is particularly soft, then I'll use the Hampton V ones because they're a bit wider. Yeah, right. The guy ropes, the, the main peg points. Of so the you tent. take a combo? Usually take a combo. I yeah. take at, at least at least two uh, of the V pegs. And I'll use that if, say, if, if the wind's coming in one direction, I'll at least use those on the two guy ropes on mm. the, on the, um, is that leeward side? I don't know what you call it. I don't it. know what you Whichever call it. Whichever side the wind's coming yeah. f- um, <laughs> from. Um, Remember, I couldn't even work out what offshore and onshore winds, what direction that made. So don't ask me about leeward winds, leeway winds. Goodness me. <laughs> I was going to try and think of something smart to say there, but I had nothing. Nothing. Um, so that, that's my preference, but I think you can, we're probably waffling on a little bit much here, but you, there's a lot of different variants and MSR I've got quite a few. Yeah. Um, I would say if you've if your tent came with full top ones, maybe get some straight shafted yeah. ones. Start with the, the Y shape, uh, the, the ground s- control the, or the yeah. groundhog ones and upgrade to those. And if you're going to really soft ground, then look at something a little bit wider like the uh, Hampton angle pegs or perhaps something longer even if you want to get the, the MSR ones. But they're, you, you can, can often, to- like you can get them in a pack of six or you can get them individually mm. as well. So even if you wanted to grab a couple of single ones and try out which one works best. Yeah, they're not cheap. If you go for no. like an MSR branded one, I mean, MSR is really good gear, but you do pay a lot for their products. Yeah. But, but I'm like, if you're buying one because you can, 
just to sort of test it out, feel it for yourself. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. before you then want, if you want to do that instead of investing in six straight up is yeah, sort probably. of what I'm saying. Yeah, have a look. But I think MSR do some single ones as well. So you can get those, the square ones that MSR do are quite oh, good. Yeah. So yeah, they're pretty so strong. So the sand and the snow pegs, yep. they're very, they're broad and they're flat and they're aluminium, but they are super flat and they've got holes in them. Yep. And one of the reasons why I mentioned these because there obviously there'll be people doing snow, mm-hmm. um, multi-day snow adventures and sand adventures, but I it didn't occur to me until I saw it online recently that somebody said that they almost exclusively use these pegs and nothing else because most of the trips that they do are on platforms. Oh, and righto. they just slide the pegs between the floorboards on the platforms right. and that's how they pitch their tent. And I was like, it never occurred to me yeah. that you could use those tents to do that and get awesome tensioning on your tent on a platform yeah. because these pegs will actually slide in between the floorboards and they just hold themselves there. Yeah. I was like, genius. So you can actually buy anchors for that as well, designed for pads, for, for actual hike pads. So you can oh, right, right. yeah, like specific ones. but. Don't necessarily need them. There's a few ways around it. Yeah. You can put the guy rope through the gap and then tie it to your peg underneath. Kind of yeah, thing that's true. But if you're able to just put it straight in the top, yeah, if you and just it slip there, it in, I that's just easy, it just yeah. never occurred to me. And when I saw someone using them like that, I was like, you know, one of those light bulb moments where yeah. you're just like, oh my gosh. But they're great for snow. You can hammer them in, but you can also bury them like a snow anchor, and the yeah. same in the sand. So if you actually, it is really soft. Dig a hole and tie the guy rope to the peg and just bury the peg yeah. in the ground so that the surface area is, um, you know, facing nice towards the Nice and broad and flat. Yeah, that's brilliant. And you get a really good anchor there. I mean, you create Obviously anchors. Obviously why you've got holes in them. Yeah, you can yeah. put, you could put um, the rope straight through that or just tie it around the outside. Yeah. And I mean, that's a really secure way of creating an anchor and it's actually how a lot of um, vertical rescue situations are done yeah. in, in the snow in particular yeah. by burying like an ice axe in the snow and that creates a good anchor. Yeah, so right. you can kind of apply the same thing to, um, to a hike tent. So. Yeah. Um, so if you are going to be beach camping a lot, take a handful of those, particularly once again for those guy If you're sleeping in it, your weight's going to keep the tent there, but have some heavy, uh, some sand or snow pegs to bury in yeah. the sand to keep your tent in place. And it's going to be windy on the beach anyway. So you want to make sure yeah. you've got some good guy reps for the, the uh, tent in that situation. Um, so materials. Now, yeah, materials. So you- I kind of, I try to avoid talking too much about materials here uh, earlier in the episode because- I, I wanted to talk about it here. More in depth here. Yeah, because yeah. I did a little bit of research. I've always known that there was, um, I guess there's always been steel or aluminium, right, are the two obvious ones for all pegs. Yeah. Um, some cheaper hike tents will come with really thin steel pegs, which are really thin yeah. and just bend. Because they have to be because they're steel, so they want to make them as thin light. as possible so yeah. they're not light. Yeah. So they're, sorry, not heavy. Yeah. Mm. Um, a step up from that is slightly thicker aluminium ones with a hook top. But then more and more nowadays we're seeing them come with generally those Y-shaped ones that we're talking yeah. about, like the ground hog or the, or the ground control pegs. Now, talking about products, aluminium uh, is kind of a fairly broadly used item from, from what I've seen. On, mm. this, this is not sort of industry knowledge. This is just, well, this is just my what I've seen. The Cedar Summit Groundhogs and MSR, um, I meant MSR Groundhogs, Cedar Summit ground controls, so they're yep. aluminium, yep. for right. example. And there is different grades of aluminium. Mm-hmm. So some of them, I think, I can't think of the grade of aluminium that the ground control pegs use, but they do stamp it on there, but it's different uh, quality of aluminium yeah. or different grades or different strengths. It's going to add a little bit to the to the weight difference, but not much when you're talking about one peg that probably weighs, yeah. I don't know, eight grams or something. Um, That's a good question. So a cheaper, Keep talking. Uh, I'm going to go with eight grams. Okay. Um but so the aluminium ones are commonly used usually with that anodized coating that you've got on it. So they're a really good all rounder. The trouble with aluminium is if it starts to bend, it starts to get metal fatigue. Now yeah. I'm not a, a metallurgist or whatever they're called, but uh, this is um, just kind of metallurg- metallurgist. I, yeah, metallurgist. It's, it's just kind of what I know happens. And then you're researching what happens here. And then you hear about um, metal fatigue. So when it Can starts, I, to, I just want to say real quick. Yep. If anybody else out there loves podcasts, there's an amazing podcast called Ologies and it's all about the different sciences of all the different things in the world. It's really cool. Oh, okay. So if, if they're listening to this podcast, we love you. Anyway, <laughs> okay, going on. Anyway, um, yeah, if it starts to bend, then 
you're creating a weak point in that peg and it's probably going to get worse a whole lot quicker. So yeah. if your alloy aluminium tent peg starts to bend, you probably want to replace it before your next trip because it's only going to get worse and worse and worse. And you okay. bend it back, it gets more metal fatigue. So the more you bend it, you think about if you if you got a piece of aluminium and you bend it back just and going back and forth, back and forth, you can just yeah. break it, right? That's yep. because of the metal fatigue. It's the same theory with uh, with the tent peg. Then there's titanium, which are obviously going to be more expensive. Uh, titanium, uh, once again, not being a metallurgist, this is just a little bit of research. I just want to say 0.013 grams per groundhog tent stake. 0.13 grams. No, um, kilo, sorry. Oh, man, <laughs> so 13 grams. Oh, I was a little way off. Never mind. Yeah. Um, so titanium is generally stronger and titanium is more malleable. So yeah. where – if you're building an aluminium peg and it starts to break, it's kind of going to bend in that spot and probably snap. Yeah. A titanium, um, from my understanding, is probably going to bend a little bit more, but you're going to be able to bend it back and it's not going to be one not spot that bends. Not fatigue as it's much gonna, in there. Yeah, yeah, it's going to kind of you get a bit of a get hammered in, in a rocky ground and you kind of get bends in it. Mm. It's going to stay bent, but it's still going to remain somewhat mm-hmm. stronger, whereas an alloy one, an aluminium one is going to break in that spot there. They are heavier. So the titanium itself is heavier than aluminium, but because it's stronger, you can make the peg with less material. Yeah. So they probably look smaller, but they're stronger than an aluminium one. Yeah. So that's probably a consideration if you're looking at titanium pegs, willing to invest in that. Yeah, I'm they not might, seeing them around as no. much because they're obviously something that someone will specifically seek out. They're not just a generic, you know no. what I'm saying? You're really counting down to the gram if, mm. you're, if you're going to this point. Um, I'm not, I don't think we sell any at Snowy's last time nah, I looked at the I don't range think we do and something's coming recently and, and I've I'm not assu- seen them. I'm assuming if you had titanium pegs, then you probably, you might get away with just having titanium pegs as your only pegs because they'd be a bit more versatile because they're lighter and they're stronger. Well, yeah, so this and is, they're malleable to a certain extent. Well, this is the thing. They might be lighter and stronger. So because <laughs> they're lighter and stronger, they're probably made with less material to keep the weight down so they're mm. thinner. The thinner pegs don't have as much surface area, therefore don't have the same holding power. True. So there's all these kind of considerations. That so is you true, might be better yeah. off with if it's soft ground, you might be better off with an aluminium peg that's thicker. In that that but stake if shape. If it's hard yeah, ground, shape. then even though the titanium pegs look thinner, they're probably gonna last better in hard ground than a yeah. slightly thicker aluminium one. Then there's carbon fiber, which sounds weird that carbon fiber would be in a peg and people make their own carbon yeah. fiber pegs. So they're just straight and round. Pretty sure they're straight and then often the tip is made of something else and then the top is made of something else but the physical shaft is carbon fiber? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So usually they'll have probably an aluminium, um, I don't know if it's titanium, but probably an aluminium tip on it mm. that drives into the ground because, uh, I mean, I, I don't know the science behind how carbon fiber is made but it's kind of layered stuff together so I think it, you probably can't sharpen it in the same way and if yeah. you did drive a sharp end of carbon fiber into the ground, it's probably going to break up pretty quick. Yeah. So there's usually a little metal cap on the end sharpened yeah. to go into the ground and, yeah, the tops. The top to protect usually, it. Usually, yeah. this is what I mentioned before, like a plastic cap because yeah. they're not designed to be smashed into the ground. If you where, where if you hit a aluminium peg and it starts to bend, a carbon fiber peg is probably just going to break up. Yeah, so shatter. It, it'll just, yeah, pr- probably shatter. Um, so they're really designed for light tapping into mm-hmm. the ground. In, in soft ground, you can probably do them in hard ground, but you're just going to have to persevere to get it in. But the benefit of a carbon fibre peg is I think they weigh like about six grams light. or something per, yeah. um, per peg, probably about 20 something dollars per peg as well. So it's yeah. if we go from where we're talking about a dollar or two for a camping peg, it's $20 for one, and I'm just pulling figures out of the sky there, yeah. um, it's quite an expensive investment and you really are down to counting the grams. but um, there's a whole community of ultra lightweight hikers who that's an important factor for. Yeah. And they'll do that. Um, and there's also a lot of people who make their own probably for that cost reason. Buy yeah. a strip of carbon fiber, use some epoxy resin and make your own. Make your own. Um, out of it, yeah. Um, also, one little note I made, carbon fiber, if you're traveling a lot, airports mm. and everything, carbon fiber is probably the only peg that you'll probably safely get through airport security. Ah, so, okay. Um, I don't know why because it's still probably a sharp object, right, that you could use as a weapon, but maybe it just It's probably because it won't set the machines off. Probably, yeah. So it might not be noticed. Yeah, so maybe $20 a peg is worth it if you're hiking and travelling and you're on planes a lot and yeah. you don't want to be. Or if you're doing ultralight and you can get away with carry-on. Yeah, you would be for carry-on, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, and we've mentioned plastic here as well. I. Don't recall ever seeing plastic 
eggs for a height 10? Have you seen any? I have only <laughs> never in real life. I have only online and they're mostly um, for like sand, sand-based. Yeah, okay. Super, super soft sandy ground. Okay, so you can – I have seen small versions of what we talked about in our other yeah. episode of being a sand peg, which are those big the, polycarbonate yeah, things. No, the ones that I've seen f- specifically for hiking are more of a pin – um, or they look like a, a giant nail, basically, but they're made of polycarb. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, I have seen those. Yeah. Uh, they're also good for tarps. Quite often it's it's like a nail. Yeah. Um, good for tarps because it's yeah. got a flat head on it and you can push it straight into the ground and it sits flat. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the materials I'm aware of. I've got a frog in my throat. Sorry. Oh, no. <clears throat> Talk too much. Mm. Um, that, yeah, that's my take on – pegs for hiking, but yeah. I, I reckon heaps of people are going to have an opinion on what's best, what they've used, um, and we'd love to hear about that. Um, yeah. Maybe even making your own because it's not out of the question to uh, make your own pegs out of materials you might be able to find at a scrapyard or whatever. Yeah. I given reckon, that they're an expensive investment compared and to normal pegs. If you – yeah, so just basically just some couple of things I reckon to sort of round off the episode. Having them marked in super colourful – if you know if it's got a if you put super colorful tape around them like a washi tape or something or super colorful um hoochie cord or something if you can mm. find it paracord because they get lost so easily it's so often i've just pulled a peg out just and put it down without trying to find them. it and then i go why do i keep putting it down why do why do i keep putting the peg yeah. on the ground and then you wander around trying to find it after it's bright yeah. colors make a big difference definitely um, and also the pool loop. Most of them will yeah. come with a pool loop, but if you've got ones that you can put a pool loop on because I find often those stake ones, they're really hard to get out of the ground. Because they're straight, you can't you can't get your finger or another peg under it to hook, pull it out. Mm. You kind of got to use ultra strong finger grip <laughs> yeah. to just grip the end and try, try and yank it yeah. straight out. And you could start wobbling it to get it out, but then you risk damaging the peg as and well. And bending so, it, yeah, especially. Yeah. So little loops um, are good. Now, I know we <laughs> – touched on it before in our episode with Kate when we were chatting about dehydrating food. But um, if you can't get pegs into the ground or if you're on a platform and things like that, her big rock, little rock thing is amazing. It's cool, yeah. 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 So um, you can talk about that because okay. I know you love it so much. So you use a big rock and a little rock. You get the little rock and you tie it. Check- we'll put a link to Kate's video. Yeah, for sure. Because she shows it better than we'll explain it. Mm. Um, tie the little rock to your guy rope. You lay that flat on the ground, and then you put a big rock in front of that. So, so on the tent side, uh, on, on the tent side. So, yeah. the, so the guy rope goes under the big rock, and then it can't pull through because the little rocks on the little other side anchoring of, it. of the yeah. of the um the rock there. Kate always goes on to say, "Please put the rocks back where you found them," because yeah. she's big on the environment, doesn't yeah, want to sure. wreck things, which is all, all makes sense. Let's just put the rocks back where you found them for sure, and try not to destroy anything if you're finding rocks. But she's camped. Uh, there's images in her videos camping on just rock ledges using this big rock, little rock. Yeah, situation. So. And she definitely has a not freestanding tent as well. So that has ultra to be, light, yeah. it's like a super ultralight and it has to be pegged out in order to be, you know, erected. Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. wicked. And so, yeah, it's not, not all hope is lost if you can't get your pegs into the ground, you, you know, or sticks and branches and trees and all yeah. sorts of things. Once again, don't destroy the environment, but of course. you might be able to use, um, it's not, not ideal to tie to trees, I suppose, but with consideration if you need to, use the environment around you to, to I, anchor I you. I do actually remember reading a blog once, a little while ago now, of an, a super ultralight hiker, I'm pretty sure in the US, and um, he didn't take pegs at all because he was doing, I can't think which one it is, it starts with a P. I always get the name wrong, PCT or PTC, oh, I don't Pacific know. Pacific Crest Trail. Yeah, the PCT. Yep. And um, instead of taking pegs, he just had a l- super lightweight whittling knife and every time he set up camp he would uh-huh. just grab a couple of st- twigs and whatever and whittle these pegs and set his right. tent up that way so he didn't have to carry pegs with him. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's cool. It sounds cool, right, but if, if everyone started hiking and did that. Yeah, that's true. I guess there'd be a supply of tent pegs at every campsite you went to, but then we're also yeah, I know chopping what you're up saying. the environment. So. For sure. Um, and also if you're going to – use the berry method or anything like that, then just be wary of how much of the environment you're digging up and leave Disturbing. it. Disturbing. Yeah, yeah for sure. Good for the next person. So we all seem to finish off these things with a like, yeah, do that, but don't wreck the environment. Yeah, um, but that's important because we wouldn't be here if we didn't love to be in the environment that's to right. begin with. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I think that was useful. I've never really yeah. thought that much about tent pegs, Me, to be honest well, with you. I've, I've just, thought about tent pegs before, but not so much not hiking because hiking, yeah. you don't necessarily think about them no. in the same way. No. But, yeah. yeah, it's quite a lot to talk about. So, um, yeah, if you are a hiker and uh, you have a favourite tent peg or hiking peg, let us know what it is. Let us know what combination you use, uh, all of that kind of jazz. Even maybe some funny stories if you've forgotten your tent pegs or, or something's not quite yeah. gone r- r- have right. You, have you got a big rock, little rock method? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe again and we will see you next week. Yeah, see you then. Catch you later.